We have a whole plethora of information to go through for World of Tanks console and we're going to have a look at what sort of things will be coming as of the update today. So if you are jumping onto your console, whether that's your PS4 or your Xbox One or any of the new generation consoles for the Xbox Series X, etc., you will be able to get your hands on all of this content and of course it will be all timestamped so you can jump around the video as to where you want to be the most and find out all of the information. Now, first things first, of course, if you do have the Chieftain Mark VI or you're fancying a Tier 10 heavy tank that is fantastic within World of Tanks, then there is none other than the Chieftain Mark VI. Now, what's special about this tank? Well, now it's getting a considerable buff to the tank itself as well as all of the tanks within the tech tree line leading up to this tank. And so if you're going towards the Super Conqueror, which is also on the same line, all of the tanks before it are even better. Same with the FE. 215B, uh, which is a fantastic tank that's very underrated within World of Tanks. However, back to the topic of the video, the Chieftain Mark VI, what's actually happened to the tank? Well, it used to have a pretty weak cupola whereby, you know, you used to be able to get penned fairly reliably if someone actually aimed at it, which, you know, makes kind of sense if you're aiming properly and you're hitting a small target like a cupola, then you should be able to pen. However, now it's gone up from 152mm of armour on that cupola all the way up to 230mm making it a hell of a lot harder to be able to actually get that cupola damage. What does that mean for the tank? Well you're going to be able to bounce a hell of a lot more rounds off of the tank so which means that yes you will be able to bounce um, more overall you're probably going to survive the game longer as well as having the increase to the armor of the side skirt which is that plate like kind of spaced armor on the side of the tank which enable you to stop heat rounds coming into the side of the tank um, and yeah it really does make a massive difference it's gone up by six uh, well from six millimeters all the way up to 20 millimeters making the side profile of the chieftain a hell of a lot better meaning you you will be able to bounce quite a lot off of the side especially if you're lining up all of the spaced armor on that side of the tank and remember because the spaced armor kind of fills up against the tracks it makes it even better so you will probably be able to actually side scrape a lot better in the chief than you previously did uh, because a lot of the time if something had really really high penetration they could just go through the side of you regardless of whether you're side scraping Obviously, you don't go sky side scraping against some of those brand new Sturm Tiger tanks because, yeah, they're pretty horrific within the game. As far as the other things that came with the buffs to the Chieftain, apart from armor, is of course the view range. So no longer does it have 390 meters of view range, it's now got an extra 10 meters, meaning it's totaling 400 meters in the grand total, meaning that yes, you will be able to get max vision range within the Chieftain if you put on all of the perks, meaning you're probably upwards of 450 to 460 meters of view range, which is really, really nice. It's going to enable you to actually get some assistance damage within this tank, which is always something that you can't necessarily uh, be able to get in the majority of games anyway. As far as the other things with the tank, well, your premium ammo has just got buffed. It's gone from 310 all the way up to 326, meaning that if you're a premium spammer, then yes, you'll be able to pen more things at a greater armor value. So I suppose that's a good thing. As far as other things, yes, it's got a significant buff to its health pool of about 5% roughly, well, 4.8% or something like that, going up from 2,200 all the way up to 2,300, meaning that, yeah, you'll probably survive the battle a little longer along with all of the turret buffs and the side skirt and stuff like that. It's just going to basically be better overall. Now, not only has it got armor and its uh, view range and the health pool that the tank gets and the longevity that you're going to be able to play this tank for, it's also got a top speed buff from 42 all the way up to 46 kilometers an hour forward. Not only that, it's also got an increase in its traverse speed of the turret by, th well, 4 
meters uh, four degrees a second meaning that you're up to 34 degrees a second meaning that you're probably going to be able to out traverse some of those pesky light tanks and mediums that try and come around you you're not going to be able to do it when you're actually flanking them because of course you're not that fast but what i mean is if they come and try and yolo and try and circle strafe you so that you can't quite turn fast enough you probably will be now uh, so don't go trying to <laughs> go around a chieftain at this point in time as far as the extras that this tank has got, well, it's actually got significant decreases to its terrain resistances. I think that this actually means that it's going to be able to get up to top speed faster. Um, I think that the lower the value, the better. Not entirely sure on that, so don't quote me on that. It could be getting worse, meaning that, yes, it's gone up in top speed, but it won't actually reach there as fast. I don't think Wargaming would have done that. I think that they're probably going to be looking to buff the terrain resistances, meaning that they will actually be able to turn faster and stuff like that on the different uh, terrain types and so you won't have that pretty mediocre top speed that you usually get with a chieftain of about 35 kilometers an hour realistically over the different types of terrain. Now, with the Chieftain, is it going to be worth playing? I think definitely the tank is fantastic. Obviously, you'll have to make your own minds up as to whether you think it's going to overtake the Super Conqueror and the uh, Valor and the FV215B. Is it going to become the best Tier 10 Chieftain, uh, well, British heavy tank again, or is it just going to be your second best? How would you rank the Chieftain now with all of these buffs that is outlined? And if you've played it today, then do you think it is significantly better than it previously? was other than that we'll look at the tank line before it the chi uh, well the tier 9 conqueror didn't actually need any buffs but essentially the 32 pounders just got a reload buff making the dpm better no surprise there they haven't actually buffed an overpowered tank so i suppose that's a good thing the tier 8 carnarvon which is definitely not a overpowered tank that's for sure it's a pretty mediocre slash underpowered tank to be honest with you and hence why it's got some reload buffs making the dpm of the tank a hell of a lot better and so you'll be able to put up more of a fight in a lot more quicker of a time so you'll be able to dish out the damage much faster and when you've got the 32 pounder which you probably will want to put on the Carnarvon, i think it gets that 280 alpha damage um, and you can reload in 7.3 seconds at, with a 0.32 accuracy on a heavy tank meaning that you're not going to miss uh, essentially with the Carnarvon it is a fantastic tank now it's definitely had a lot of buffs is it awful is it f overpowered no neither of them it's definitely going to be fairly okay within the current meta of course it is slow and it is a heavy tank so you're probably not going to be ever reached that kind of pinnacle of the tier as far as other tanks, and boy oh boy does this tank need a increase in its forward speed, and that is of course the Black Prince, the basically fortress of tier 7 for heavy tanks, however the speed really did let the tank down. It's basically got a 25% increase to its top speed forward, so it's gone from 20 kilometers an hour up to 25, so that is a massive massive boost for the tank, and certainly if you play this tank you're going to be very much quids in uh, and I really do like this that they've actually increased it not only that they've actually increased the armor values of the frontal hull which means that yes you'll probably be able to bounce a couple more rounds than you will and so people can't just auto aim you yes it's probably still going to happen uh, with their premium rounds but it will happen a little bit less so I know that that's going to be a benefit to the tank as well as far as the other ones, of course, both the Churchill 7 and the Churchill 1 will be getting buffs to both the frontal armor values of the tank, as well as the gun and the top speed, usually, um, for both of them. Of course, if you want to check out them in specific, you can just pause the video here and read it, uh, but I won't go into full detail on the Tier 6 and the Tier 5, uh, because there is just quite a bit of information and it will take uh, 10 years to just go through it all. Now moving forward, obviously we've got a few premium tanks that are going to be getting buffs, there's no massive um, changes to them, but they are the Carnarvon Action X Heavy Tank and the Paladin Carnarvon Action X, which is just the skinned version. They're basically getting a reload buff, 0.3 uh, seconds, which means that you're probably getting a DPM buff effectively of about... 
5%, something like that. You know, it's not bad. You're certainly going to be dealing a hell of a lot more damage with these tanks if you can continuously fire that gun, which is, of course, the main problem with the tank because they are pretty slow. So you're not going to be able to get up to the um, front lines as quickly and use that DPM for the majority of the game, at least, especially if you're trying to hunt down anyone at the end of the game, you're probably going to have a little bit of trouble with this tank. As far as the other premium tanks, we've got the FV201, the A45 heavy tank. That's both the black and the standard version. They've basically got penetration buffs, making them more kind of similar with the tanks of the tier, going up to 200 and 244 on your premium rounds. Premium tank, the tier 6 A43 black print prototype heavy tank that I would never ever recommend, um, has gone up in value of speed by 3 kilometers an hour, making it a little bit more <laughs> speedy, but yeah, it's a pretty terrible tank anyway, so I wouldn't really recommend purchasing it if you do get the chance to actually own it. Uh, as far as the other one, British Tier 6 British Bulldog, which is of course one of the urn operation challenges from a while back, uh, and that has basically improved the speed of the tank from 20 to 25, making it much like the Black Prince, where you'll be able to get up to the top f front line of the battlefield much quicker, and so yeah, it's probably going to make the tank a little bit more competitive at the tier, because the gun on this thing is just fantastic. I really did enjoy it, even though it was a really slow, horrible kind of speed a mobility tank it really does have the dpm to kind of push that damage out when you do actually finally get to the front line now if you like the sound of any of those buffs to any of the tanks within the chieftain tank line then of course you'll be benefiting from the 50 percent silver discount between tiers 3 and tiers 6 and the 30 percent silver discount between tiers 7 and tiers 10 meaning that yes you will be able to pick up all of these tanks for cheaper if you want to per repurchase any of them then go ahead and obviously if you're grinding towards the tank you'll be getting not only the silver discounts but 25 percent bonus XP on every single vehicle in the line whether or not you're even going for the Chieftain so if you're interested in going for the Super Conqueror or you're interested in going for the FE215B they will all get the 25% XP bonus on every vehicle so the Conqueror will be able to take advantage of that to be able to get them faster as well so that's a definite positive for any of you looking at British heavy tanks right now and hopefully you do enjoy that. Of course we have got one other British heavy tank but this one is a new kind of tank coming into the Cold War game mode and that is of course this Centennial Chieftain T95-59 and this tank is already in the game as part of the World War II game mode with the Centennial Chieftain T95. It's a premium tank at tier 8. If you have played the game for a long long time you will be able to have earned this tank a long time ago probably four years ago something like that maybe even longer um, but it essentially came out from the hundred years of the beginning of the first world war i think it was so yeah or maybe even the 28 uh, 2018 so maybe it wasn't that long ago i don't know um but yeah basically this tank very very good um in the actual game very underrated actually but since it's coming to cold war or in the post-war era one you'll be able to get it as part of a premium tank it will cost you money of course and it will cost you a fairly decent chunk however if you haven't got a premium tank in Cold War, it will only cost you 4400 uh, but you will have to wait until November 9th. So you've got to wait two weeks before you can even purchase the tank uh, for that actual decent price. Of course, if you want to purchase it straight away, it will cost you nearly 11,000 gold, which is quite a decent chunk and it comes with a lot of stuff that you they value very highly in terms of the gold value so it's not really worth it to be honest with you all of the advanced loader traction system advanced optics get converted into silver equivalent which then gets converted into the gold equivalent which trust me silver to gold as standard is a very expensive way to get your silver within the game and so yeah although it is a 20 percent saving it's not really because you're getting a load of stuff that's overpriced as hell so don't buy this one if you really just want the tank itself. Obviously, if you want all of the extras and you're willing to pay it, then that's absolutely fine. Go with it. Um, but if you are just in it for the tank itself, then it's probably worth just waiting the extra two weeks. You really aren't going to miss out on very much. Um, and yeah, I guess maybe even wait the one week to be able to just pick it up with some premium account time because 6,000 gold for a premium tank isn't actually that much considering it will be a bit of fun 
I will do a review on this tank as of when uh, I can get my hands on it myself. Hopefully that will be within this week and we'll be able to see just how good the tank is and I can really showcase whether or not you should pick it up as part of the Cold War game mode if you're interested in making silver, which of course leads me on to the previous video on this channel, uh, which was focused on the silver and how you can maximize the silver in every single one of your games. Now, moving on with this video, of course, we have to look at the War of Clans event, which is another clan event. Obviously, we had the most recent one being that you could actually uh, team up with your clan, try and deal the most damage within the whole of the clan, and then you can compete with other clans. This one is slightly different, and this one is based on a prize pool of 3 million gold is waiting in the upcoming global map campaign. Get all of the details below. Right. So, the global map event is a unique in-game space where clans battle for dominance. Are you ready to find out which clan will conquer the most territories and get the biggest chunk of gold? The global map, map event comes straight from the community team. The main objective for clans during the global map event is to capture as many towns as possible and hold them for as long as possible. So this is kind of like a, um, a limited time event. It comes when you sign up with your clan, which I will try to do in for my own clan within this game. And hopefully we can actually get our way to get to get some of this gold so I can dish it out to you guys and hopefully we'll get some uh, decent rewards, maybe potentially. But of course, we do have to come within the top 10, I believe it is. Now, how does it actually work? Well, you've got to actually log in on the specific dates. You then have to jump into the actual global map events on the custom games game mode and then join in with your clan to be able to take part. Now, how does this work in particular? Well, the campaign starts on November 1st at 12 o'clock, basically UTC. So in the in the morning, early hours in the morning, uh, and it will last until December 11th. So you've got what, just over a month, nearly six weeks to be able to actually complete this event and just during the event and just work your way through it. Uh, you will need to log in on the website using your account. It is safe. The day then the campaign starts a video tutorial will also be available to help you understand the global map interface and explain the main rules. Now, how does that actually work? The campaign consists of two phases. Tactical, when you move your tokens across the map and battle when battles take place. So tactical phase between is on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Battle phase is Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Important for US residents, battles for objects located in the USA West and USA East zones will take place on Monday, Wednesday and Friday evenings, local time. All battles take place in custom games mode where the clans themselves will create rooms to join. To make it more convenient for all clans, we divided the global map into five time zones, which is, of course, uh, Central Indonesian states, I believe, something like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Of course, I could have butchered that. It may be something completely different. But obviously, if you're in this zone, you'll know exactly what it is. It might not be that. It, it's. I believe it is somewhere in that region. Um, then, of course, we have the Europe, North American East, which is the East Coast of America, obviously, and the West Coast of America, and then Asia uh, as well. So if you're in the specific time zone, then you can find that out. Important information for clans um, to participate in global map event. A clan must have, must have at least seven active players. For solid results, we recommend targeting between 35 and 40 active players. That is an, uh, utterly ridiculous, actually. And only the clan commander can register the clan for the global map event. However, both the clan commander and his deputies can move tokens as well as launch attacks on towns. If you're a member of a clan where the commander hasn't been active for a long time, you can basically um, become change your clan and then you'll be able to participate in the campaign. So if you're interested in just participating in an active clan, then you will have to join one. I don't know if I'll have any space in mine. It's been maxed out for quite a while. I'll uh, go through and update it. Hopefully I'll get ourselves signed in and decide what we have to do. Uh, and then rewards and rankings, you basically get um, some um, approved emblems. And then during this, you'll be able to get um, some gold, which is uh, essentially each 1000 gallons uh, will equal one point, um, which means that, you know, over the course of time, you'll be able to get uh, some gold. 
So that's pretty decent. We'll be able to earn some rewards and hopefully you guys will join me in that. Of course, there is one last thing to this video where we look through the specific details that Wargaming have given on the forum and that are the following. Monsters Awaken mode is within the game currently when you're watching this video and you'll be able to just jump into that or do a gameplay video of that this week and hopefully show you what kind of things all of the different monsters tanks that are in the game actually have the abilities and all of that sort of stuff which is always interesting. We then have that new premium tank the Centennial Chieftain for the Western Alliance. We have the Truth Prevails Urn Challenge where you can get that free Sizka Skoda T40 and the Skoda T25 skin which is a fantastic tank at tier 6 for the Czechoslovakian line and then we have the key cards drop rate tables updated so key cards are basically refreshed into new drop rates for different tanks and then we have the tanks reforged for the chieftain plus one minus one matchmaker ends of course today so if you were interested in playing because of them plus one it is over unfortunately and then we have the tanks available for purchase on the premium tech tree now the a43 black prince don't buy it it's awful um as far as some others, bug fixes to be announced on Tuesday once verified. Uh, bundles, we have the Centennial Chieftain T95 primed and that sort of thing. Obviously, you can pick whichever one you want if you really want the tank right now. Obviously, we talked about waiting a little bit. Uh, then we have the Class Sampler bundle, which comes with the Mutant or the M6A2E1, as it's otherwise known, the Volk T44100 and the Turtle. Uh, this bundle is probably not going to be worth it, to be honest with you. Then the Tenacious trio the mutts the bison and the capture king tiger it's going to be a very expensive one probably because both the bison and the capture king tiger are expensive all of them are pretty, particularly mediocre so they're not going to be that competitive they're all pretty novel though the bison having that really weird um high caliber gun that is pretty hard hitting the mutts is very average it's like your typical like it's like an indian panzer almost but lower profile and yeah it's just a bit strange uh, the capture king tiger is just basically a king tiger as like every other one in the game then we have the battle wizards the amx cda 105 the equalizer and the ariet progetto m35 mod 46 all of these are actually pretty decent except from of course this is an artillery and so if you're not interested in that then you probably won't want this bundle uh, but both the cda 105 and the ariette are actually really good tanks actually underpowered actually the um, cda it's actually underrated even um, as a tank itself it's a french tank destroyer at tier 8 that really does pack a punch uh, and reloads pretty quick and then of course the progetto just being fantastic uh, this tier then we have training tracks which is the low tier option this week coming with the panzer t25 the kv222 and the t14 would never really recommend it if you're a new player you might as well just jump in at tier 8 anyway like everyone else uh, and to be honest if you want low tiers you can get some from the premium pass anyway or the season pass which is probably better value if you're new anyway other than that deals of the week is3 auto and the somua sm both fantastic tanks within the game and the personal offers are citadel tiger one which is that's yeah, just another tiger but this one's at tier six then the pattern m46 pattern korea which is a tier eight pattern um like the m46 at tier nine but down at tier eight and it's just yeah it's got some weaknesses and then of course the rheumatow scorpion which is the tier eight tank destroyer for the german line that is just utterly broken it's the scorpion g uh, but the unskinned version so there we go everything for this week's update hopefully you did enjoy this update obviously if you want to join the clan you can always send an invite whether or not i can accept it it is just based on the supply and demand and who got there first unfortunately um, but other than that hopefully you did enjoy this video if you want to check out other videos on the season pass tanks or you might want to check out the recent update news where we covered the fixes and stuff for last week or maybe you just want to look at some of the guides for the channel that'll all be on screen right now hopefully you'll join me in one of those videos and i hope to see you in the next one goodbye